Hello again and welcome to another Show Me tutorial. In this one we're going to be talking about the spinothalamic tract. And we're going to be talking about it today with special reference to the travelling pain fibres that uh, are within it. So we need to consider a few things before we get going. One is that this is a sensory pathway. Yes, it carries pain, but it also carries other modalities as well, such as crude touch, pressure, and temperature information. Number two is that it's predominantly a three neuron system. And for most of those modalities I just mentioned, three neurons is all it takes to for information to come from the periphery, i.e. receptor on the first order neuron, to get to the primary sensory cortex in the brain itself. However, there are two pain subsystems and while one of them is a three neuron system, the other one involves a relay that eventually uses four neurons. So we must remember that and we'll talk about these two pain subsystems by drawing a flow diagram so that we can separate and compare them and I think that's the best way. So let's start off by dealing with our receptors on the first order neuron and these are going to be called free nerve endings. And let's see if we can draw a box around that see if it'll let me do that. Free nerve endings carry pain, but if this were crude touch or pressure or temperature then the nerve endings may be more specialised such as being Merkel's discs or Pacinian corpuscles or Ruffini end organs for example. But we're dealing with free nerve endings which are carried in neurons which are known uh, to be called pseudo unipolar neurons and they're the ones that look a bit like this where Got our free nerve ending here, FNE, free nerve ending with our cell body pinched off to the side, the axon continuing, and then this is where the point of synapse would be, so information would be traveling in this direction. And as I said before, there are two subsystems that carry pain, and the two subsystems can be regarded as being what we call the, the direct pathway or the indirect pathway pathway and these are different because of the type of pain they carry and the speed in which they carry them. So I'm going to draw a mini table here just to see the differences between them. So with our direct pathway we have got a fibre type known as A delta and draw a line down there and A delta fibers are thinly myelinated and they relay sharp short-term well localized pain such as that resulting from a pinprick so the abbreviated name that's sometimes referred to um, for this particular pathway is the fast pain pathway so sometimes the direct pathway is called the fast pain pathway because it's fairly quick. The indirect pain pathway uses what we call C fibers. If I can fit that in, squeeze that in just about. Uh, and these are slow in their conductivity, mainly because they're considered to be unmyelinated nerve fibers. They're slow conducting and they relay dull, persistent poorly localised pain such as that resulting from the excessive stretching of a tendon for example. So these are the two pathways and we'll see the slightly different directions they take. So before we separate their different journeys we just need to get our first order neuron with this free, nerving on, this free nerve ending on the end, I should say, to the grey matter 
of the spinal cord and eventually it's going to reach part of the grey matter known as the dorso lateral fasciculus so eventually a fos of first order neuron whether it be carrying direct um, fast pain fibers or indirect slow pain fibers will be traveling in the same nerve and reach something known as the dorsolateral fasciculus which is in the gray matter of the spinal cord. Now we're going to move on to another screen here to highlight and accentuate the differences between the direct pathway and the indirect pathway. Remember this is the fast and this is the slow route. So our first order neuron has reached the grey matter of the spinal cord and we're now going to focus on the anatomy of the direct pathway. So from here we're going to get our first order neuron reaching something inside the grey matter known as a laminae or a lamina and these are just subsections or categorized areas of, of grey matter, the organization of, the, of where nuclei are arranged within the spinal cord and that's all it means. And the lamina that this information is going to in the direct pathway is laminae 1 and 5. And from here we get a synapse highlighted by this asterisk to a second order neuron. So this is neuron number two here. And this second order neuron will cross over or decussate. So we're going to get the decussation of that second order neuron. And from here, we're going to get the second order neur neuron ascending on the now contralateral side of the spinal cord to reach the thalamus. So we're going to get that reaching the thalamus. We're going to move on to another page. And the nucleus of that thalamus is known as the VPL, and that is the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus. It's somatopically organized, which means that it's located, or can represent different parts of the body and feel uh, or transmit localized pain so that we can feel exactly where that pain is coming from with regards to body parts. From here, we will get a third order neuron. So this is where we get another synapse here. And we get our neuron number three, leaving the thalamus and traveling through the posterior limb of the internal capsule, so for IC to abbreviate, and then through something known as the corona radiata which is the white matter of the cerebrum in order to reach the primary sensory cortex also known as the precentral gyrus which is in the frontal lobe of the brain. So that's the anatomy of our direct pathway. And there were three neurons there from start to finish. 
let's travel back now and pick up our indirect pathway and from here we've got some differences so first of all we've got our first order neuron remember at this level and it's going to reach part of the grey matter of the spinal cord and instead of reaching the laminae 1 and 5 it's going to go to laminae 2 and 3 and from here we're going to get a synapse onto second order neurons so neuron number 2 is going to be here as well and from here we're going to get a little bit of variation so we're also going to get decussation so we're going to also get crossing of some of the fibers and they will ascend on the contralateral side of the spinal cord but also we're going to get some of those fibers which will travel ipsilaterally meaning that they don't cross they will ascend on the ipsilateral side so the same side in which the pain signals came in so we get a splitting of the fibers here and the splitting of the traveling fibers within the spinal cord so what happens from here well we actually get from here instead of going so we're still going to get them ascending of course so whatever happens they're still ascending whether they're they've crossed over or not and from here we can carry on our journey and instead of going to the thalamus which we see over here with the direct pathway we get a relay to a structure known as the reticular formation and the reticular formation is basically an area within the brainstem and this particular area is part of what's known as the reticular activating system which is a, a, a diffusely arranged bunch of nuclei with no real structure or organization that's clearly understood that is particularly involved with arousal and the reason for slow pain reaching the reticular formation is because these signals uh, need to arouse parts of the brainstem so that we can actively become more alert and avoid any future pain from the same stimulus or remove ourselves physically from the source of pain. So the reticular formation is a relay in the slow pain or indirect pain pathway and from here we get our third neuron that leaves the uh, reticular formation so here we've got synapse with neuron number three, but this third neuron is now going to the thalamus. And in contrast to going to the VPL, which we saw over here, which I'm highlighting in red, it's going to go to a different type of nucleus. And this type of nucleus is called the intra lamina nuclei. The intra lamina nuclei is different from the VPL in the sense that it cannot localize to individual body parts. So it's not related to, say, it can't localize pain from the foot or the leg specifically. It's very diffuse and poorly localized in its structure so it cannot relay that type of information. So leaving the thalamus we now have an additional neuron. So we've got a synapse here in the intralaminar nucleus and we've now got neuron number four which only exists in the indirect pathway and let's just draw an arrow going down so we can feed on to the next page and from here we have information that's poorly localized reaching parts of the brain and these projections eventually reach 
brain structures such as the hypo hypothalamus, parts of the limbic system, and parts of the limbic cortex, particularly the cingulate cortex and the insular cortex. So how is this different to reaching the primary sensory cortex with direct pain? The slow pain response is really about projections which have an impact on the autonomic reflexes. So through the hypothalamus there will be autonomic aspects of pain such as increased heart rate, maybe flushing of the skin uh, and stress associated with, with pain, particularly uh, slow, persistent pain. There will also be an aspect of emotional suffering which goes through the limbic system and may even involve parts of the frontal lobe which is the effective component of pain which is the actually dealing with the, the pain cognitively and, and maybe aspects of depression that may come into prolonged pain through this particular pathway. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned before, there is also an element of arousal through the via the reticular activating system. So, rather a long tutorial, but uh, hopefully there we saw the difference uh, between the two pain pathways operating within the spinothalamic system. Okay, I shall see you next time. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.